Hello everybody, I'll be talking to you about this course uh, which is advanced certification in uh, corporate accounting. So what is this course all about? Uh, the course is about learning the practical part of the accounting which is in uh, consonance with the uh, corporate requirement. This is number one. Number two, we'll also have to, we will also train you on the process involved, especially in the MNC. Broader level, we can categorize into accounts payable, accounts receivable, and the general ledger. So what does accounts payable team do? They basically take care of the vendors, they book the invoices, and they make the payment, and in the process, there's a lot of stages involved, and therefore, that is what the uh, the whole cycle, which is called as a MIPI cycle, the P2P, or popularly called procurement with pay. So that cycle, I will try to I will try to explain it to you in detail. So now the second uh, one, which is called as an accounts receivable. So that would be uh, something to do with the sales orders and uh, the billing part, the receipts, the advance receipts. How do you account for the deferred revenue? How do you account for the unearned income? So both are liability, anyways. So this is all about uh, the accounts receivable. So basically, it is called. Uh, O2C, which is uh, which can be called as order to receipt. So from the sales order till the receipt, the whole stages involved, or the cycle, cycling process involved, would be explained in uh, accounts receivable. Uh, the last category is basically the general ledger, where, wherein most of the you know the GL team were uh, uh, primarily involved in making the adjustment entries, the closure entries. Uh, there would be at least uh, 10 to different uh, 10 to 14 uh, different entries. Which is uh, standard uh, in standard would, uh, would be followed in the uh, corporate, and this is what you're going to learn. For example, maybe uh, the entries related to the deferred tax, uh, deferred revenue, unearned income, uh, maybe uh, this is uh, unbilled revenue, uh, so the prepaid expense schedule. So, all these things, the end to end process, which is uh, categorized into APR and uh, GL, uh, so the end to end process of accounting is what we are going to train you in this uh, advanced certification in corporate accounting uh, course. Uh, the second part of the course is, uh, as I said, we need to align to the, uh, the practical part of accounting. So whatever you have studied in the academics uh, uh, is more to do with understanding the uh, concepts. So the difference between the academics and uh, the practical uh, part, the activity, what we are going to do in this, uh, perform in this course, uh, is basically the principles the same, uh, no doubt about it. Whatever you have studied in the academics and what you are going to practice in the corporate, the principles the same. But the main difference is uh, the application part. You are not going to apply. You apply it, uh, you know, uh, at the academic level. But here it's purely the, at the corporate uh, level. You are going to see the application. Uh, see, for example, uh, let us take up uh, balance sheet. Balance sheet, uh, maybe for your, uh, from your academic point of view, for you. The whole objective is to match the balance sheet. That will be your uh, you know, primary goal. If the, uh, the balance sheet is matched, that means you have completed your balance sheet. So from the corporate uh, point of view perspective, it is not so. Uh, what is uh, taught here is whether the balance sheet has complied with the concepts, whether it has complied with the matching principle concept, whether it has complied with the accrual concept. Uh, the matching the balance sheet is, uh, you know, it is only a simple arithmetic uh, uh, and, uh, and a robust understanding of the definitive system. Which you can comfortably match the you know, balance sheet. The matching is not a criteria at all. So, what is the most important part of the balance sheet is whether it is in consonance with uh, the accounting principles, sound accounting principles, as well as the accounting standards. So, this is what you're going to learn. And also, we will start uh, the whole course from the fundamentals. So the fundamentals is not something what uh, you would have uh, studied in your, uh, your, your beginning of uh, the academics. But uh, we are trying to align these fundamentals again from the corporate uh, requirement. Um, for example, uh, let us say the ledger review. So if you take up this uh, ledger and uh, let us say uh, Mr. Ram, Ram is a brand, and you have something called a travel year. So this is for 50,000 rupees, and there is a bank account here, and this is debit, and this is credit. Okay, so bank is around 10,000, and let us say the balance carried down is 40,000. So now, so now being a, you being an accountant, how are you going to interpret this lecture? So what is the what is the meaning that this lecture carry? Does Ram owe anything to the company, or the does the company owe anything to Ram? 
what does the travel on the credit side mean to uh, mean as far as this ledger is concerned? And what does the bank on the debit side mean as far as this ledger is concerned? And what is this balance read? So this is what you need to read the ledger. The, your ability to read the ledger uh, comes only when you have a sound understanding of uh, you know, the uh, accounting knowledge, uh, accounting principles. So therefore, this is one criteria. Uh, so this is one uh, aspect. The second part is the what I said, the accounting uh, concepts. Uh, for example, you take up the profit and loss account. So you have an opening stock here. Okay, so let us say this is 100 multiplied by 100. So the value is 10,000. Okay, you have made some purchases for 200 quantity at the rate of 100. Again, it is 20,000. And then you have some sales. Your sales is around 150. Let's say you have sold it at 200. That would be around 30,000. All right. So, therefore, you have. So, now what you are seeing now is you basically you have booked an expenditure for 300 quantity. And then what you have sold is for 150. So what does it mean? That means you are going to book an expenditure for 300 quantity, but the sale is only for 150 quantity. That means the expenditure is not matching to the income. It doesn't match to the income. So in order to match this, what you're going to do is you're going to reduce the unsold stock. So what is the unsold stock? The unsold stock, in other words, is also called as closing stock, which means which is here in this case it's around 150 stock of 100 rupees INR so that would 25 to 50,000 INR okay so this is what is unsold stock either you can reduce it from the debit side of your pre account or you can bring this on the credit side with a positive right you do not have to reduce it you can just take it on the credit side so whenever the expenditure, which is the opening stock and purchase, is a part of it, which is an unsold, if you're going to credit it, that means you are reducing the expenditure to such extent. And then what you're going to do is you're going to move this to the balance sheet. Once you have removed this from the PL account, you're going to remove this, uh, I'm sorry, you're going to move this to the balance sheet, calling it as closing stock. So 150 multiplied by 100, that's 15,000 IR. Okay, so this is what is called as magic principle concept. I can give you a number of examples for magic principle concept. So once we start building the balance sheet, we are going to uh, you know, go through each and every individual concepts and then we are going to build the balance sheet. So what if I don't follow the matching principle? That means you are going to overbook the expenditure, okay, and uh, you are going to report the sales so my expenditure is not attributable it's not completely attributable to my sales so the sales that is going to happen in future so you have a sales in the next year but you have already booked the expenditure in this branch here so there is you know, the problematic uh, if you are not going to follow this matching principle concept similarly you have a macro concept you have very important the historical cost concept you know, so these are all the very fundamentals part and followed by this uh, we have a bank reconciliation bank reconciliation that we're going to do very practically and then uh, we have uh, the ledger review and analysis how to interpret a ledger how to audit a ledger okay these are all the fundamentals part and then uh, we have some adjustment entries adjustment entries or almost the final entries what we call there are almost 14 entries zero yeah. yeah. And then we are going to prepare the schedules and then we are going to pass the journal entry. So that's how we are going to do. And then uh, we have um, the trial balance analysis. How to analyze the trial balance. Although the trial balance is not, there can be errors in the trial balance. And how do you figure it out? So therefore, you need to first do the analysis part. And then you need to you know, uh, judge whether the trial balance is right or wrong. So we have some questions here like why the closing stock does not appear in the trial balance. You know, and why PL account for the current year, PL amount for the current year does not appear in the trial balance. We're going to do some research to study as to try to understand logically as to why these two items does not appear in the trial balance. 
and we also try to understand why only balance sheet items are carried forward to the next year okay and uh, we try to understand more and more uh, conceptually so once this is done you have some accounting standards to study okay i'll take up some important aspects like revenue recognition okay so you should know the difference between a uh, sale and a revenue okay sale versus revenue you should be knowing the difference you yeah, have a timing of revenue timing the revenue okay and uh, we also have uh, you know in terms of accounting standards the exchange gain loss how to record exchange gain and loss what is the standard way what is accounting standard say about the exchange gain and loss and there's some few important accounting uh, standards like most important in the area is the depreciation so there are four ways to depreciate an asset uh, one is the normal way is the wear and tear okay then you have a flexion of time just the passage of time you're going to depreciate then you have technological lapse also because of the outdated technology you're going to depreciate and then due to the market changes you're going to depreciate we will study all these things in the uh, depreciation and next uh, you have a detailed you have a detailed uh, fixed asset register okay excel based where in almost uh, some 7200 assets will be there categorized in the various category groupings like office equipment computers you know vehicles uh, office furniture uh, etc and then you are, we are going to prepare a depreciation schedule with a completely in excel workbook Okay, depreciation schedule with ten columnar, ten columnar depreciation schedule, and then at last we are going to revisit everything with all the adjustments which we are going to prepare the balance sheet and the P&L with groupings and schedules, groupings and schedules. Okay, so this is all we are, what we are going to, you know, work through the uh, through the seventy-five hours of. Course uh, probably it will vary from 60 to 75 hours of course. Uh, so we are considering the uh, Q and A also from the trainings. Uh, so this is what is all about the course. I I sincerely hope this course will be extremely helpful because you are going to get a renewed outlook of what an accounting what uh, accounting is and your whole perspective of accounting would definitely get modified to suit the corporate uh, requirement. And also, see what is the advantage of this course? Yes, of course, you should have some uh, benefit uh, you know, of this course. Uh, so the advantage is this. Uh, so just remove this. Okay, so the advantages. So what is that? The advantage. Number one, it develops your core accounting skills. No doubt about it. Core accounting skills. Okay. Number two, this will give you a lot of evaluation. Okay, to your understanding of accounting and valuation to pursue further courses. Further, you know, some. Uh, courses like very professional courses like uh, your CPA or chartered accountancy course. This will be extremely helpful. This this course will be extremely helpful. Okay, this will definitely give you a vantage on your CV. No doubt about it. And your interviews very smooth. No doubt. When I was working with some other institute before this project. Uh, two of my students, uh, I'm happy to say that they, they cleared the KPMG uh, interviews. Okay, it's quite tough to see that the KPMG did really uh, because of the questioning the logic uh, more to do with where the interview will pattern is more to do with the understanding of where they're going to test your uh, accounting concepts and standard uh, in detail. So, the KPMG, they, the students, my students have done well, and my students have also. Uh, done well in few other interviews. Uh, that's what the feedback I uh, got. Uh, so I feel this course is extremely important for someone who is uh, who is already there in the domain of accounting, who is already an employee there working there, because it helps uh, them for their move uh, from one vertical to another vertical, maybe from BP to your 
or to GL or whatever it is. Maybe that's why it's helpful for them, maybe in terms of promotion as well. And uh, maybe for students, of course, as I said, it's a lot of valuation they can pursue further some professional courses. So this basically a career oriented course. I would like to call it as a career oriented course. Okay. So that is all uh, from my end. So thank you very much and I wish you all good luck and I would like to see you all uh, in my class. Thank you very much.